Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. All right, here's another example of um, first and second tier karma. Let's say there's a person uh, who is very spiritually advanced and gives a, a lecture on um, on how you can depose a government and they give this lecture to to a small group of people, right? So the person that gives the lecture technically hasn't done anything wrong. They, they're just presenting an academic argument, right? But the second tier of people, if they're speaking in the economic interests of people who have less than everyone else, they may uh, act out a scenario that results in great loss of limb and life and, uh, and, and great suffering and greatly increased soul wounding for, for everyone involved. And so technically the first person has no, uh, has no karmic, has no legal, um, there's no legal hold upon them. But the people that they speak to and pass on their malware and mal speak to, which in this case has to do with consequentialism and that great heresy of Auschwitz, those people take on all of the karma that's legally like sanctionable and actable upon, you see. And this is how the duality play is. Those with, with great uh, spiritual insight or higher understanding tend to influence the minds of others um, so that they then carry out karmically things that are that are legally like binding on them and and all the people that they associate with uh, so therefore it's impingent upon those who are spiritual leaders to do their clearing first to take care of their clearing so that the tiny specks and and distortions and densities in their bodies of light are completely cleared and cease to influence the, the masses of people to, to acting out during the transition to new life on new earth. Another case of, of karmic pass down and second tier karma is well known in literature and no doubt amongst law enforcement all over the world and that has to do with hiring people to perform illegal acts for us, right? Let's say um, that a man of wealth and privilege hires someone to, to beat up and intimidate someone else, for instance. That person, the thug that does the beating up, he is likely to get caught. His risk is pretty high of getting caught eventually and of being punished by the law. But the other person, the person who hires him, is much less likely to get, is much less likely to receive those kinds of legal sanctions. And if so, probably not that severe. The same is true of hiring people for murder and so forth. It happens kind of frequently, I guess. But here's the thing that everybody overlooks, and that is that the karma for the person that starts the ball rolling is much greater, actually, or at least as great as that for the person that carries out the action. They're responsible for this other soul's action, you know? So that's, that's something by way of karma to consider. Fortunately, during this process of transition, most of the acting out that we hear about on the astral plane and in the astral stories is really just vivid dream states brought on uh, by the ascension process. It's like waking nightmares and it seems like people are acting out all kinds of things but in fact if you check the daily news and if you check the police reports you'll find that all that stuff is really not happening. So there's that. That's really a wonderful thing. And so there are, will be a few instances here and there of lawlessness, but in general, I think, throughout the ages on Earth, that has been true, has it not? It's only that these days, as these issues begin to uh, continue to unfold, uh, people are becoming more and more aware of the causes. 
those of us who who are ascensioneers know the extreme importance of clearing doing our own clearing work we we concentrate all our effort on clearing our own our own uh, light bodies and on allowing the light to flow through from heaven to earth through us you know rather than um, rather than trying to influence large masses of people right now we encourage everybody to create that divine connection between source and their own spirit and between their spirit and this earth on which we live and I, I advise that as well I, I think that is the most worthwhile thing that we can do here on earth here's another instance of malware mouth speak uh, to do with the notion my god I want your money so let's say you're in in that group and you're intent on gaining money from women let's say so you're looking at a woman and you say to her soulfully right you say to her my god I love you my god I love you what does that mean really if this is a ploy right a ploy based on soul wounding then what that means is that this person feels that they are a great spiritual person who loves God they look down upon you a woman they want to convince you that they love you through a subterfuge or ruse and they want your money <laughs>